mean span. Okay. So Green's theorem means its mini version we have studied in the Stokes theorem. You know that for the potential we derived an equation which is k rho over x minus x prime and d cube x in the integration. Now the question is if rho will be specified in a given region then we will use that phi of x equation directly and we will derive the potential because our purpose is to, derive, to derive the potential equation but in electrodynamics we are not always given the uh, volume charge density like rho of x we are dealing with boundaries and on those boundaries either the potential will be specified or the derivative of that potential, the space derivative of that potential will be specified which we call the electric field. So on a given boundary either potential or electric field will be specified. Now the equation of potential is only having the charge distribution rho of x. It is not having anything related to the boundary. So we need a theorem in which all these things to be included like the first thing which is the rho of x like if it is will be specified there then we will have to use that directly or if it is not specified then on the boundary some potential will be specified or the normal derivative of the potential will be specified which we call the electric field in that situation we will have to use the Green's theorem. So the Green's theorem is just the development of the inclusion of the boundary condition inside Stokes theorem. So let's start with this. The f phi of x will be specified is k rho of x prime d cube x prime by x minus x prime then we don't need any other uh, equation but from the rho of x prime means which is the charge distribution we can easily calculate the potential but sometime potential wave is defined on a boundary are the normal derivative of this potential is defined like curly phi by curly m which is the normal derivative it is defined on a boundary and this thing we call electric field you know this is electric field because electric field is equal to curly phi over curly x this is the electric field in one dimension now if this electric field is only in one direction which is the normal direction to the surface then this is curly phi over this such normal derivative we normally write is curly phi over curly m in order to differentiate it from the ordinary derivative this we call the normal derivative now the divergence theorem you know that it is you have written this is the divergence of any physical quantity and a volume element is equal to closed surface integral and v dot dA. You have written the divergence theorem like this. Now we will convert or write this one in the Jackson notation and this is v and any physical quantity let's say now I write instead of v 
V in physical quantity, I write A, and this is d cube x is equal to closed surface integral and a dot n d a. Now instead of d a is a vector, I am writing d a is a scalar and then n is a unit vector which is normal to this area. So this is the Jackson notation, we are writing it in this. Now let's define this A, which is any vector physical quantity. Define this A is the result of two scalar potentials. One is phi and the other is psi. These are actually two scalar fields. Okay? Phi and psi are two scalar fields. So I can write this A is phi psi. Now you know this is vector, these are scalar. In order to make this vector, I am writing it as a gradient. So phi and psi are like this. Now it's a vector quantity. Then I can write that divergence of A is equal to the divergence of phi del sum. And this is equal to del phi into del psi right because these are two scalar functions now this one is applying means del phi into this one then this one plus phi into del psi this is the product rule derivative of the first into uh, derivative of the first and then the second function is it is while the derivative of the second and the first function is it is so this will be equal yes this will be del dot del dot so it will become del square and similarly I can write the a dot n is equal to phi del psi dot n and this one I can write now you see this is space derivative but it is only in the normal direction to the surface then I can write this is phi psi over n clear? Yes. because this is not the normal derivative no this one, this is, this is potential, so this is scalar field, this is potential. What about this one? Psi by this, this is space derivative, space derivative and this is normal to the boundary. So variation of potential, you know this is electric field. So this is electric field and this electric field is normal to the boundary or the surface. Now I can put both of these results in this equation. So I will have integral on a volume and then phi dot del psi plus phi and then square psi then d cube x is equal to close surface integral, close surface integral, a dot this is equal to phi curly sine over curly n and d a with it. Because for a dot n I put this value with d a with it. This we call the Green's first identity 
the means first identity. And now, if I exchange or interchange phi to psi, interchanging phi to psi means I define my A is psi gradient of phi. Again, it will be the same situation. So, these equation will change and now the equation will get the form wherever there is phi, just make it psi. So, the Green's first identity will become V and then this will be gradient of psi dot gradient of phi plus psi and Laplacian of phi d cube x is equal to closed surface integral and sine curly phi over curly m d a. Right? What I did? I just changed phi to I just interchange phi with sign. This is equation 1 and this is equation 2. Now, if I subtract, if I subtract from subtracting equation 1 from 2 means 2 minus 1 will give me 2 minus 1 will give me I yes. right here means integral on a volume and then you see here from 2 you are subtracting 1 so you know the dark product is commutative so this one and this one are cancelling each other in the subtraction while this minus this so it is psi del square phi psi del square phi minus phi del square psi and d cube x is equal to closed surface integral this one is sine curly phi by this. So phi del square sine minus psi del square phi and this will be equal to sine psi curly phi by curly m minus phi curly psi by curly and D A will be like this. If you subtract, if you subtract the other way around, like one minus two, then minus this will come early and this will come second. Similarly, this will come early and this will come second. So no problem. You subtract one from two or two from one, it is the same situation. And this you call the Green's theorem. This is the Green's theorem. Now, we can substitute any arbitrary function for the phi and psi. Any scalar field we can put there and now we will get its value. So, suppose that we